The seventh round of the 1954 World Championship took place on August 22nd in Switzerland at the notorious Bremgarten circuit. This track was renowned for its unique design, lacking any straight sections. Instead, it featured a series of interconnected turns and short curves, a configuration that had remained unchanged since its inception in 1934. As the new era of Formula One gains momentum, it's becoming increasingly clear that major Grand Prix events are dominated by factory teams, which is to be expected. Out of the 16 starters in the race, only two were independent, highlighting the growing influence and resources of the factory-backed teams. This trend underscores the competitive nature and high stakes of the championship, where factory teams leverage their technological advancements and extensive support to gain an edge on the track. The factory teams were in full force at the 1954 Swiss Grand Prix. Mercedes-Benz fielded three Nürburgring single-seaters, driven by Juan Manuel Fangio, Karl Kling and Hans Hermann. These cars were similar to those used in the previous race, but with reinforced rear suspension to address the issue that caused Kling's car to break down in the German Grand Prix. Fangio, with four victories in the first five stages of the World Championship, held a commanding lead in the overall standings and was on the brink of securing his second championship title. The only driver with a chance to challenge Fanjo for the title was his fellow Argentine, Jose Froilan Gonzalez. For Gonzalez to secure the championship, he needed to win every remaining race of the season. Acknowledging the critical importance of this Grand Prix, Scuderia Ferrari entered five cars into the race. In addition to their main drivers, Gonzalez, Mike Hawthorne, and Maurice Trintignant, Umberto Maioli, and Robert Manzon also competed in the Scarlet Ferraris. Ferrari brought two 1954 models, featuring new, larger, and wider front brakes. The Maserati team, still reeling from the tragic loss of their leader Onofre Marimon at the German Grand Prix, arrived in Switzerland with a significantly updated lineup. Sterling Moss, who had impressed the Italian team with his outstanding performances in his privately owned Maserati, was now the new team leader. Joining Moss was Sergio Mantovani, who had already competed for Maserati this season, and two new team drivers, Roberto Mieres and Harry Schell. The first practice session was damp but free from rain, allowing drivers to post respectable times. However, these times fell short of the long-standing record set by Bernd Rosemeyer in 1936 with an auto union, which still stood at an impressive 2 minutes 34.5 seconds. Both days of qualifying for the 1954 Swiss Grand Prix were marked by cloudy skies. However, the starting grid order was established on the first day when the drivers managed to complete several laps on a relatively dry track. Jose Froilan Gonzalez, fully aware of the importance of this decisive race, delivered an outstanding performance and secured the fastest lap with a time of 2.39.5. Juan Manuel Fanjo, the main contender for the title, was just two tenths behind Gonzalez, securing second place in qualifying. Sterling Moss continued to impress with his excellent speed, earning third place. Maurice Trintignant had a strong performance, taking fourth place ahead of Carl Kling and teammate Mike Hawthorne. Hans Hermann, driving the Mercedes modification with open wheels for the first time, placed seventh. He outpaced the two Maseratis of Ken Wharton and Sergio Mantovani, while Clemmer Bucci, the fastest Gordini driver, rounded out the top ten. Before the Swiss Grand Prix, Robert Manzon, who had been driving a private Ferrari 625, took the wheel of the new Ferrari 553 for the first time. The car had an unconventional setup, with the accelerator and brake pedals reversed, causing Manzon to feel immediately uncomfortable. This led to a mistake where he veered off the track, causing the Ferrari to crash into a couple of concrete pillars and small trees. Manzon was ejected from the cockpit, but fortunately, he only suffered a couple of broken ribs. However, his Ferrari was beyond repair, leaving only four cars from the Maranello team to start the Grand Prix.
The drivers will navigate 66 laps around the track, covering a total race distance of 480 kilometers. At the drop of the flag, Fanjo surged into the lead, taking advantage of the five-speed gearbox, swiftly moving up from the second row. By the end of the first lap, Fanjo had pulled away from the pack, while Gonzalez and Moss were closely trailing, just three seconds behind. Only Bucci failed to complete the first lap, stopping shortly after covering half a lap due to a broken fuel pump. Unfortunately, this early setback forced the Argentine driver to retire from the race. Fanjo quickly sets the pace, gradually widening the gap from Gonzalez in second place to three seconds as he pulls away from the rest of the field. Kling loses control of his Mercedes at the forced house turn and spins out. Approaching the end of the lap, he collides with the straw bales, causing him to plummet to the back of the field now more than 30 seconds behind Swarters, who was already trailing. Moss finally succeeds in overtaking Gonzalez after a fierce battle, securing second place in the process. Hawthorne had a cautious start to the race, initially running alongside Trintignant and Herman. However, after five laps, he began to increase his pace significantly, leaving Trintignant and Herman behind. Simultaneously, Hawthorne started closing in rapidly on Moss and Gonzalez, who are now trailing Fanjo by six seconds. Wharton makes an error and spins around, dropping to the back of the field. Jean Berra experiences a complete failure of the clutch on his Gordini forcing the Frenchman to drive into the pits and retire from the race. Fanjo, extending his lead over his pursuers by approximately one second per lap, now commands an 11 second gap ahead of Moss, who holds second place in the race. As the race settled into a rhythm, there was a flurry of fastest laps. Fanjo set the pace on laps 9 and 11, followed by Hawthorne on laps 13 and 14. Hawthorne's fast pace allowed him to catch up to Gonzalez, and by lap 16, he successfully overtook him. On the following lap, Hawthorne also passed Moss, achieving redemption for the Silverstone incident. Following Hawthorne's lead, Gonzalez also overtakes Moss, reclaiming third position. Two drivers from the leading group encounter issues on the same lap. Hawthorne's accelerator pedal malfunctions, but the Englishman skillfully navigates to the pits. There, the mechanics swiftly address the problem, allowing Hawthorne to resume the race in fifth place. Meanwhile, Moss encounters more serious issues as his car suffers from a failed oil pump. The Englishman pulls over to the side of the road, but fortunately, this happens not far from the pits. Sterling quickly runs to the pits in the hope of taking over Shell's car and continuing the race. As a result of these developments, Gonzalez moves up to second place, while Trintignant advances to third place. Kling aggressively challenges Hawthorne in their battle for fifth place and successfully overtakes him to take the position. Harry Shell encounters the same oil pressure issues that plagued Moss earlier, forcing the American to drive into the pits and retire from the race. Moss arrives at the pits only to discover that Shell's car is now out of commission. With no opportunity to continue, the Englishman reluctantly becomes a spectator for the remainder of the Grand Prix. But the weather kept changing at the Bremgarten circuit, and the sudden burst of sunny weather surprised everybody. Hawthorne faces another setback, as he is once again plagued by an issue with the oil pump. The Englishman pulls to the side of the road, forced to retire from the race due to mechanical failure.
Kling overtakes his teammate Hermann, moving up into fourth place in the race. On lap 34, Trintignant pits due to an overheated engine, retiring from the race and promoting Kling to third place. Fanjo solidified his lead with the fastest lap of the race, clocking 239.7, further establishing his dominance. With Mercedes-Benz running reliably, his victory seemed assured. On lap 39, Kling found himself securely in third place when his engine abruptly failed due to suspected fuel feed issues, reducing the field to just eight remaining cars. From the race's outset, the weather steadily improved and the track at Bremgarten dried considerably as the sun briefly peeked through. However, with just five laps remaining, a few raindrops fell, a reminder of the unpredictable 1954 weather. Despite this, everyone maintained a steady pace towards the finish line. And now let's join Juan Manuel Fanjo at the Swiss Grand Prix, where, amidst pouring rain and on a perilously fast track, he's expertly navigating the treacherous conditions. Thanks to the solid performance of the Daimler-Benz team and Fanjo's consistent race pace throughout the entire season, he's going flat out on the Bremgarten circuit, inching closer to securing his second world championship title. This year's Swiss Grand Prix had been lengthened to 66 laps, each one passing slowly as drivers focused on endurance rather than aggressive competition. Fanjo, maintaining a brisk pace of 2 minutes and 43 seconds per lap, showed little sign of slowing down while Gonzalez struggled, losing 2 seconds per lap to the Argentinian in front. Fanjo dominated the Swiss Grand Prix from start to finish, claiming his fifth victory of the season and securing his second championship title. Despite his efforts, Gonzalez settled for second place, visibly proud of Fanjo's success. It was a memorable race for Hermann, who celebrated his maiden podium finish in third place, while Miras took fourth, earning his first Formula One points. Mantovani rounded out the top five, securing valuable points for the second consecutive race. Juan Manuel Fanjo emerged as the dominant force, securing victory in six out of eight championship Grand Prix, ultimately clinching his second world title with ease. This marked the final Formula One race held in Switzerland. After the tragic events at the 1955 Le Mans disaster, the Swiss government implemented a complete ban on all motor racing activities. Although Swiss Grand Prix were briefly revived with non-championship events in 1975 and 1982, both races were hosted in neighboring France. Switzerland remained without any circuit motor racing for nearly 64 years thereafter.